Hey, this is Marcia Jeans, Instructional Technology Specialist, here today to show you how to do some basic layering and grouping objects in Smart Notebook 10.0. You might be wondering, why would I need to layer and group objects? Well, let me give you a couple ideas. Layering, it's a great way to snazz up your lessons and draw attention to key facts and figures. This is an example of layering right here. Now, grouping, why would you group? Oops, the words weren't grouped with the button. Notice how the word disappeared? That's because it's right here. So, grouping objects will help you create lessons that will work really nice for you. Let's go and look at a couple examples and I'll explain just a little bit further. Here I made a nice little Venn diagram where I want students to compare frogs and toads. I think I want to move my words down a little bit more on top of the VIN. But when I do that, it looks like my words are going back behind the VIN, not in front. In Smart Notebook, whatever you create first automatically always gets sent to the back. And since I typed my words first, it is going behind my VIN diagram. Same with totes. Well, it doesn't show up very good. So, what I want to do is I want to click on the word frogs and I want to do the drop down menu and go to order, bring to front. When I do that now, and when I bring it on top of my Venn diagram, it now is in front of the Venn diagram. It's kind of like layering. You can do the same thing over here, bring to front. So as you're creating your lessons, you'll probably use that feature quite frequently. Now here's an example of grouping. I made this nice graphic organizer and I probably want to use it over and over again. Um, but if you notice, all of these different objects are separate pieces. Like that's just a line and then I've got a triangle. And if I try to move that, it's not going to move together in one piece. So this is where grouping comes in handy. Now there's a couple of ways you can group, but on this particular thing, the easiest thing for me to do is take my cursor and kind of draw just like a big box around everything. And notice I've got several drop-down menus that popped up. On any of the drop-downs, I can click on the drop-down arrow and go to Grouping, Group. Now watch when I try to move it. It's all one object. Voila! Let me show you a different way that you can do that as well. I'm going to click undo a couple times. I could have, if it was just a couple objects, I could click on them and hold my control key down at the same time. So I could do that, but on this one it's going to actually make it a little bit harder to do. But it is possible for you to do that. Now, once I've got my object selected, which I actually don't on this one, I have a few of the objects, you can do the keyboard command of Control G, G for group. Makes sense, doesn't it? And those objects will now be grouped. So you've got your two choices. You can either use the drop down menu or you can use the Control G. Now here's another example of both layering and um, grouping. I have a little pattern hidden under here and I'm going to slowly start taking it out and seeing if the students can try to start guessing what will come next. So we've got a, oh, we've got a circle, triangle, square. What do you think might be next? And I'm going to just show a little bit of it. Ah, voila. So we'll pull the pattern out after the kids have got a chance to guess. And basically what I did is I took, these were all separate objects here. We, I got a circle out of the gallery and a triangle out of the gallery and a square. And then I cloned them and I made a pattern and then I grouped them all together. Then I put them behind this um, rectangle here and I made sure that the pattern object was behind the rectangle. Okay, so let me show you over here. I've got a, um, here's my, my separate objects all, and I've got them all nice and lined up here. Easiest way, drag all of them together and click Control G. Simple as can be. Now they move as one object. Again, you'll use that quite frequently. And that is the very quick 
way to learn how to group and order your objects in Smart Notebook software. On another tutorial, we'll get into some um, more advanced ways that you can use these features to make some really exciting lessons. Thanks, and see you next time.